everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and this is, today we'll be talking about my November wrap up. Let's get going. So, this is again, it's been up and now. I feel like ever since taking a break, it's been harder for me to get into back to reading. But, on, but without further ado, let's see what we have in store. So my first one was Zada by S.J. Jones. Magic flickers, love flames, chaos reigns. Magic is forbidden throughout the morning realms. Magicians are caught up in abomination and blamed for the plague of monsters that raised the land 20 years before. Jin Zada and Hell really had enough to worry about. A piece of stepmother's cruel whims, looking after her blind younger sister, and keeping her own magical gifts under control without having to deal with rumors of monsters re-emerging in the marsh. But when a chance encounter with an uneasily flushed young man named Hans brings her into contact with a secret magical liberation organization called the Guardians of Dawns, Zara realizes there may be more to these rumors than she thought. A mysterious plague is corrupting the magicians of Zani and transforming them into monsters and the Guardian of Dawn believe a demon is responsible. Now this is supposed to be like Sailor Moon meets Cinder, but I kind of, when I read it, it's, I had a little uh, similarities between Sailor Moon. The only thing that was similar was a purifying a demon to a human. That was the only thing that could be compared to, but otherwise, that's the only similar things I could find in this book. But regardless, I gave it a four stars. So this this was actually quite good, but I don't. So as I said before, I don't really see the comparison to Sailor Moon, um, which is only to purify a demon to humans. Zara was an okay character, and I did like more of the quest that she had to go to, but uh, I but I could not stand Hans. Who is the prince? But I cannot stand him. Like he just acted immature and then just like a young child overall. So I just could not stand him at all. He was just a crying baby throughout the entire book. So I hated him. Um. So yeah, he just acts immature and um. I did like Yuli and her reveal to Zava and what and what Yuli is, who she is. So I really like that part. And I like Yuli's powers as well, so it's pretty cool. Uh, the moon building was cool. It was like a mixture of modern and fantasy, but I was really disappointed with the final battle. It ends like in a few short pages, and then that was it. So like I expected kind of more, like more struggles and all of that, but I mean, I guess that's okay. So my books just fell, FYI, <laughs> if you hear that thud. So that's just my box. But um yeah, so honestly, um I think the ending was suitable and I thought it was like a good way to end. So Zara has to find more guardians. Probably that is set up for the next book it seems like. And so I might read the next book actually. But um yeah, also Zara is supposed to be Jada, like J, J instead of Z. That's how other people commented in the reviews. Um, for those who have listened to the audiobook, I physically read it, so I didn't know, but um, it's kind of weird. I thought it was supposed to be Zada because of the Z, but it's Java, I guess. I don't know. So my next one is Persuasion by Jane Austen, and this is actually the last completed novel she had finished before she died. So. That one took me to the heart, <laughs> but um, yeah, so so we have a young Captain Wentworth proposed to Anne eight years ago, and while Anne truly loved him, her friends, family, and close confidants all told her marrying a man with no money or social standing was not a good choice, and so she declined the proposal. Anne Elliot had a chance at true love and happiness, but she threw it away. Now at 27, Anne is considered a pedestal, spinster, and one without, without fortune as well. Her father and elder sister have almost spent the family money they need to rent out the family home to help their finances. An admirer and his wife take up residency and soon Anne realizes that Captain Wentworth is the brother of the admirer's wife. But when Anne runs into the captain, it is as if he doesn't know her. But Anne cannot hide that her love for the captain has not dulled over the years and soon she begins to hope for a second chance. So as you can tell, it is a second chance romance. I think this was as done well. I, 
I do have to agree that sometimes the character seems kind of bland. I wish there was more developed in my characters, but I did like Anne a lot, so it was cute. So, you know, it was just cute and short, and I did love the characters regardless of them being blonde. Um, I really like the settings and the descriptions. Um, this book, as I said, is perfect for a second chance romance. But this did start to be slow, even though the book did end up picking up, so that's good. I really like how the story between Anne and Wentworth was unraveling, how they also got to reunite once again, eventually. But the one thing that this book needed was more dialogue. It had way too many thoughts instead of, you know, like actual talking dialogue, so... Yeah, so that was the only thing that I wish the book had. It had more thoughts than talking. But um, otherwise, I really like it. I gave it a 4 stars. But yeah, I really like this book a lot. It was so cute. So I recommend reading it. So my next one, this was really disappointing for me because I was really anticipated by it. But that is Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong. So every year, thousands in the Kingdom of Talon will flock to its capital twin sister, San Anne, when the palace hosts a set of games. For those confident enough in the ability to jump between bodies, competitors across San Anne fight to the death to win unimaginable riches. Come on and go along. I gave it a two stars. I was really disappointed by it. I just wasn't really impressed at all. Although the ending kind of made it up, so I gave it like a 2.5 because of the ending. Even though I guessed it as to who it was, but I just felt really disappointed by it. So it could have been so much better like if there wasn't info dumping, slow paced, too much action and things that just didn't make sense. There was a lot of info dumping which may just made the world building so confusing all the while so I don't know, I could just couldn't keep track of it. And like one of the questions is like why would a tournament happen in a city where there's citizens who could be injured by the tournament itself? Like why not if this is supposed to be Hunger Games, like why couldn't they just put it in an arena? Like how, like how it was in the Hunger Games. Like why have the game being in the city itself? So, I don't know, but that just seemed really stupid. But I couldn't find any romance between Kala and Anton. They were so blind and so not interesting. I just got kind of so I just predicted it as to what will happen to them. It was quite obvious what will happen. So I just could not care less. Um, so as I said, the world building was confusing and there were things, and I didn't really quite get the political system in this book. And I also feel like Chloe didn't really get the political system in her own fictional kingdom as well. So I don't know what she was trying to point out here, so that I was just confused at all time. Um, the jobby body jumping was interesting to say the least but i'm not sure if that's gonna be in a good way because there was some questionable book moments with body jumping like while the concept was intriguing but then the questions around it so like you're telling me that people can jump into a body any body but the person who can't jump into your body has no choice but to do the bidding from the person who jumped into the body like, I don't know how to feel about that, and that just doesn't seem okay. And honestly, if that happens to you, I pay to you because if you cannot jump into your body, who cares? You're gonna die. Because so, and you can't even go to the doctor because you're already dead. So, yeah, health the healthcare system in this was bad. So if if you if you die, the family gets money. Like okay. So, I don't know. I don't know. And so, I don't think Chloe, like, actually fleshed this out. And so, I really wish she did, but it just felt, it just failed. So, I don't know. And also, and I also thought body jumping was illegal. From what I understand and read, it seemed like body jumping was illegal. So, did Chloe forget that? Or she was just, whatever, let's just go for it. 
So I don't know about that part either. And also the power dynamics just didn't really sit right with me because you can also technically body jump into a child. So yeah, that's messed up. So I don't want that. I hate that. I wish it. So you can body jump into a child. Yeah, no. So yeah, so unfortunately this book was just not it. It failed in so many aspects and I just couldn't care about it. Like I, just, like I just couldn't care about it. I just didn't really like it and yeah, I just hated it. So yeah, no, it was not for me. I think Chloe should stick to writing YA because I really do like her YA books and I honestly wish she didn't love this book. <laughs> But um, yeah. And my final one is House of Roots and Moon by Erin and Craig. I love this one and gave it a 4 stars. We're following Verity and she has something. She can see something. Something like ghosts. So when she got an invitation from the House of Chantelny, I'm sorry if I said that wrong, she got excited but Camille, her older sister, doesn't allow Verity to go because of the ability she has. But Verity took her own, her own destiny, her own fate, and she decided to go to Chantilly. Upon arriving at Chantilly, she meets a boy named Alex, and her world turns upside down. However, something sinister, something dark is happening in Chantilly. So, I gave it a 4 stars. I really like this. I'm really glad Evan had decided to return to this world, just because I love it so much. So it's really great that she returned to it. I love the setting, the spooky vibes, the atmosphere, and the magic um, what this book had, and the mysterious that came with it. I thought, I appreciate like the twist, but I think there's a little bit too much of twist. It might have been, you know, just a bit too much, but the cliffhanger was interesting, so that was kind of, I'm like, okay, so I'm hoping she will comp continue. Apparently there's going to be a third book by Lenora's Pove, so that's going to be interesting. Um, there are some things I didn't really like is that the choices Vanity would make. There are times where she seems selfish and sometimes it feels like she wasn't sure if she loved Alex. It was like back and forth kind of thing, so. I also didn't like the romance. I thought it was like so quick, like she fell in love with him in a month. And in the month they wanted to get married, so I'm like, wow, like that was quick. So it's kind of it's kind of seems ridiculous, but I didn't really like when Vanity would constantly repeat the same things after a person had said. So a person would say something, and then that per and then Vanity would just repeat it back like an echo effect. I hate when characters do that. It's annoying. So I did like the complexity of family relationship relationships and I did like how Vanity kept seeing things that weren't really there. The one thing I also didn't really like was some cheap explanations to certain things. Gavard, who is Alex's father, he like he came in an all apron and there was something splattered on, on his apron. Gannon said like, oh, this is just some beet juice that is on my apron, and Vanity seemed to take it as it is. I'm like, really? Like, come on, like, it's obviously not beet juice, so like, I don't know why Vanity is so... She's such so dumb sometimes. And also, Vanity did seem like she needed to wait for more evidence until she finally came like, aha, he's the one. Even though the evidence is like right in her face, so like I don't know why she had to wait for so long just to have what she needed. Like it was like right in her face and she couldn't call the shot. So and that was really quite annoying as well. Uh, so, but anyways, I did really like this book. I'm glad she Edwin is returning. But um, yeah, so this is exciting. So that's all the books I read in November. Let me know what you guys have read and please like, comment, subscribe so you'll be notified every time I post. I will see you in my next one. Bye!